Now, let me show you how to unleash the power of an herbal healing tea. Here's Anne to help me show you how to make the perfect pot of herbal medicinal tea. Hi, Anne. Hi, Dr. Page. You know, first we need to look at the herbs that are going to be in that tea because high quality is so important when we're working with herbs. In fact, it may be the most important thing because that's where those healing benefits come from, in the high volatile oil in the herbs. So here we have some ginger. Now, ginger is full of high volatile oils, but we need to see whether this one has those. So what we're going to do is something called organoleptic testing in the herb world. Sounds a little complicated. Well, it is a fancy term, but all it is is common sense. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to scratch that ginger root and then smell and see if the oils mm -hmm. are there, mm -hmm. and they are. And then we're going to take some rosemary leaves and rub those between our fingers and then see if those oils are there. Mm, and they wonderful. are. Yeah. And then we're going to look at the herb. Now, what we don't want is for it to be all dried and brown and crumbly. We want to make sure it still has some color, even if it's dried. And these roses do. You can see that they do. Mm -hmm. I noticed uh, the roses are dried and some other things here are fresh. Does it make a difference? You, you know, it doesn't make any difference at all. What you're really after is making sure that the herb, whether it's fresh or dried, has those oils. Mm. You know, herbs really are medicinal foods. One of the wonderful things about them is that they give us their healing benefits, even though we're just using them for flavor. And ginger is a good case in point for that, so that it's boosting your circulation while you're just using it to boost the flavor of your sushi. How do you use ginger? You know, I eat ginger every day. It's wonderful in a tea, but one of the best ways to use it is to make homemade ginger ale. It's just delicious, and it's what our grandmothers used to do. You just make a pot of ginger tea, add a little honey, and then pour it over sparkling water, and you've got homemade ginger ale. It's delicious. You know, the ancient healers use teas more than any other form. They knew how to make pills. They knew how to concentrate herbs to make tinctures or extracts or oils, but they still used teas to deliver those herbal benefits. Why use teas rather than something else? Well, you know, they're safe and gentle. Children can use them. Elderly people can use them. People who are ill can use them. And you know, our bodies are mostly water, so it's very easy for a tea to go through our body and to work with our body processes. It goes through our bodies by osmosis rather than just down our gastrointestinal tract and out. The secret is to take the tea in small sips over a long period of time rather than just drinking it straight down. Now, let's look at some herbal formulas. Is it better to use herbs individually or in combination? You know, herbs work far better in a combination Herbs are synergistic together, kind of like one in one makes four, and a combination gives your body a lot more to draw from. Here's a formula. It's an energizing formula. You can see the herbs here, and here are the individual herbs. Here's some red clover and prince ginseng. Here are the little rootlets are. There's damiana, and there's go-to cola. You know, none of these herbs are stimulants by themselves, but when you combine them as a good herbalist would, they support your body energy rather than sap it. How does that work? It's because herbs work at the deepest level of the body processes. We have to remember they're foods, so they're going through your body with your own enzyme activity, and they work through the glands, so you get energy support. Most people can feel it right away. 30 to 40 minutes. Sounds great. Let's have some. <laughs> you know, my son's not been feeling very well, and I wonder if you have anything for kids. You know, this is a good formula for kids. It's a first aid formula, and it's very similar to a 19th century herbal combination for childhood diseases. So it's full of old herbs like bayberry bark and cloves and ginger. And those herbs have lots of antioxidants and vitamin C, 
and soothers, so that it'll help with the aches and pains of colds and flu. Sounds good. I'm looking forward to trying that with my son. So why not just use tea bags? You know, the value of medicinal teas lies in those volatile oils we've been talking about. And when a tea bag cutter cuts the herbs, it rubs them so fine that a lot of those volatile oils escape or evaporate. You know, you can see just how fine it is here. But when you use a whole herb tea that's unfaceted, like this one here, you get all those volatile oils even when the herb is dried. You know, you need to steep herbal tea in a certain way to get the best results. First, you've got to start out with the right kind of pot, and it should be glass or porcelain. Why is glass or porcelain important? Well, you know, in the first place, you get a more sparkling brew with glass or porcelain. In the second place, if you use a metal pot, like an aluminum pot, some of that metal may wash into the tea. But this pot is perfect for making a medicinal herbal tea. And it's a beautiful pot, too. You know, it is, and it has the glass bowl. It has the sieve, the stainless steel sieve, so that the herbs can float. Why is it important that the herbs float? Well, you know, when the herbs float, all their facets come into contact with the hot water. So they release those volatile oils that we've been talking about to get the herbal benefits. If you use a tea ball, a lot of times they're all crammed together, and so all the facets don't come in contact with the hot water, and you lose some of the herbal benefits. You know, this teapot has a cover, and that's important, because you want to keep those volatile oils in the teapot. People in times past knew this. The Victorians had covered tea cups, and the Chinese today have covered tea cups. It also has a little candle warmer here so that you can keep the tea at exactly the right temperature. You know, we talked a little bit about drinking the tea all during the day so that it stays in your body longer. And in order to do that, you need to keep it warm. So this is a good feature. And finally, it even has a little tea timer. Different herbs like roots and barks need different steeping time than leaves and flowers. A root and bark tea will need about 20 minutes. A leaf and flower tea will need about 10 minutes. Now let's make a pot of tea. How much tea do you need to use? You know, you need about a tablespoon for two cups of water. You could use three cups if you wanted to make a pleasure tea, like green tea. Does it need to be boiling water? You know, it doesn't. You want to have almost boiling water. Remember, you don't want to cook the tea. You just want to steep it. But see how the herbs float? Mm -hmm. Now we want to light the candle so we can keep that tea warm. The idea is to be able to sip on it all during the day. So we'll cover the tea, and then we'll set the timer. We're going to set this timer to about 10 minutes. That'll be the perfect time for a leaf and flower tea like this. When that timer goes off, we've got a perfect cup of tea. Well, our timer's gone off, so let's try the tea. First, we'll remove the lid and the sieve. You know, I put these herbs around the flowers in my garden when they're used. You mean directly into the soil, like a fertilizer? Exactly. You know, I get to use the herbs, then the flowers get to use the herbs. Sometimes there are amazing results. So let's pour the tea. No, I'd like to give my son some of this tea, and I wonder if the dosages are different for, for children than they are for adults. You know, that's a good question because they are. Herbal remedies go by weight. So for a child that's about 10 to 12, you'd probably want to use half of an adult dose. Mm -hmm. For a child that's 7 to 10, about a third of an adult dose. For a child that's, say, 3 to 6, you might want to use a quarter of an adult dose. And for an infant, just a teaspoon in juice or water is more than enough. So let's try the tea to your health. To your health. Mmm. It's delicious. It is. It's delicious. 